Our text from Acts chapter 1, the lot fell to Matthias, in Jesus' name, amen. May another take his place of leadership, that's a quote from Psalm 109 verse 8. This was part of the guidance of the Old Testament that the disciples followed after the ascension of Jesus. They sought someone to fill the place left empty by Judas. You might have noticed in the list of names of the apostles, there was another Judas. It was a common name. Uh, people of Judah named a lot of their children, male children, Judas or Judah or whatever, a form of that. So uh, here are the qualifications that the other disciples desired. One of the men who had been with us the whole time Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time Jesus was taken up from us, the ascension. In other words, they needed someone who had been following Jesus for that whole period of his three years of public ministry. The task, to become a witness with us of his resurrection. Now, we're reading this uh, sometime after the resurrection of Jesus, before Pentecost, that's the time period, and after the ascension. So sometime in those 10 days between ascension and Pentecost, this takes place. When we read, to become a witness with us of his resurrection, this doesn't mean they, that this person was to pretend they had seen the resurrection like the others had. No, they had all seen Jesus resurrected. This now means that this person would become an official representative of what they had seen and experienced, an official messenger of that event to the world. Then the process. Two men were suggested who fit the qualifications. We don't know if there were others, but perhaps there were only a few who had been with Jesus in these early days and then continued for all of those three years. They prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry. So they desired God's guidance. They cast lots. You hear that language at the cross, the soldiers casting lots to divide Jesus' clothes, which they would do with anyone who was being crucified. That was part of the benefits of being the guys on duty at that time uh, of a horrendous task, but they would get something they could either use or sell. They cast lots. What does that mean? Well. In Hebrew practice, normally people would use marked rocks or sticks or perhaps pieces of parchment. We think of pulling a name out of a hat, but in this case they put them in a bowl and shake them until one would fall out. And by that process they allowed God to show his choice. We may think it's, uh, what, would you, what word would you use? Uh, arbitrary or, or kind of uh, random. Random. Yeah, random, but they recognized that and that was part of a process that we <coughs> see elsewhere in the Old Testament when we have two choices and we don't know what to do, or maybe more than two, God please give us some guidance and they would use this process. So it was not something off the top of their heads, this was an established practice to ask God's guidance. The lot fell to Matthias, and Matthias was added to the eleven apostles. And then, <laughs> scripture is basically silent about what happened to Matthias after this. Even church tradition, which tells us about some of the other apostles' activity after this time, has nothing positive to offer other than we know there's a festival day for St. Matthias Apostle on February 24 very possibly a day when he died for his faith. Why should we focus on Matthias? Well, perhaps we should not focus necessarily on Matthias himself, but on what he represents and what this whole process represents. Taking up for departed ones place of leadership. 
Just think about that setting. What had happened? The loss of Judas must have hurt tremendously. He was one who had shared their lives for three years. Day by day, joys and sorrows, blessings and hardships, following Jesus, sitting at his feet, learning with all the rest of them, and then suddenly he betrays their master. The master rose again, but Judas was gone, having taken his own life. They must have grieved, but the ministry must go on. So they followed the guidance of Scripture and sought God's help to choose another to carry on the leadership with the eleven. How does this apply to us today? We don't need to be concerned with selecting apostles, obviously, but the principle of taking up the work of those who have gone on before us is still important. Those of you longer termed members of Good Shepherd and the rest of us who remember lots of years at other congregations, take a moment to think back on those who did various types of work in the church in your past. Those who may now be departed from this life or those otherwise unable to do works for whatever reason. Think of them in your mind as I go through this list. Who do you remember from your past as pastors, teachers, greeters and ushers, trustees, or those who did repairs or cleaned or took care of the grounds, organists and musicians, treasurers, financial secretaries, recording secretaries, helpers, supporters, inviters, evangelists. On whom has the lot fallen to take up their responsibilities? Quite a few of you are filling some of those positions at this time. Who of you are qualified to do what needs to be done? And what are the qualifications? Well, in general, here are a few qualifications for any of those tasks. To know God's love for you in Christ Jesus. To know in Christ that your sins are forgiven. To desire that love and forgiveness of Jesus be spread to more people. To be willing to use your God-given abilities in whatever way you can. To do God's work in this place. God has blessed this congregation with many able workers in the past, just as he's blessed the whole church through the past 2,000 years. As one worker departs, another, sometimes more than one, steps in and carries on. So the work of God's church, the various tasks needed so that God's word and sacrament can bring the good news about Jesus, the work of God's church continues and even grows. What lot has fallen to you today? Is it a leadership position like that of Matthias? Or is it more of a member, worker, supporter position like Joseph Barsabbas, who didn't get the lot to fall to him? You know that leaders can't do all the work by themselves. Lead, by its very nature, means there are others who will follow. Leaders generally are few, but followers and supporters are many. Next week we'll have our annual voters meeting, and particularly we need some people to fill the positions of vice president, secretary, that's recording secretary, and possibly a second elder. If you'd like to know more about any of those positions or responsibilities, please speak to me or to our president, Brian, or to Tyler, who's served two roles in the past year, or to Leo. Each member of Christ Church is a leader or a follower. In Christ Church, we don't say, well, I've already done my share. Instead, we ask, what would God still have me to do?
What lot has fallen to me now? How am I able to serve it now? You may not become famous in church history. Even an apostle like Matthias has fairly little fame. Although we do have a verse about him, at least the process in the hymn. And his name is in scripture, but we don't know much of what he did. But every life that you touch is blessed by your service to the Lord. His love will reach out through you, whether you're teaching or greeting or fixing or helping or otherwise living your daily life in Christ. Through you, God is working so that others may know Jesus, a loving and forgiving Savior. Like those apostles of long ago, each of you is a witness, one who tells the message of Jesus' resurrection. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia.